Hello, I'm Andrew Fryer, and in this demonstration, I'm going to install System Center Virtual Machine Manager 2008 R2. That's a bit of a mouthful, so I'm going to abbreviate that to VMM, if that's OK. I've got a nice shiny new Dell Covert laptop with 16 gigs of RAM, three SSDs in it, and an i7 processor. So I can run several virtual machines on that. And one of the things I want to be able to do is to use VMM to manage all of those. Currently, I've got two VMs running. One of them is my domain controller, which is also providing DNS and DHCP services, as well as having some service accounts we'll see later. Then, joined to that domain, I've got this prepared virtual machine, which I'm going to install VMM on. And as you can see, I've named it appropriately. Let's jump over and have a look at that machine now. If I go on to here, and open Server Manager, you can see I've got the Application Server role installed, which is a prereq for VMM and actually for SQL Server, which I've also got installed, as you can see here, together with Reporting Services. If I go over to File Manager, you can see that we've got three VHDs on this machine, not just the usual one. The first one has got the operating system on. The last one is where we're going to put the virtual machine templates that VMM uses. And the one in the middle is where I've got the installation for all of the System Center products, including Virtual Machine Manager. So I can go into here now and run Setup. From Setup, I can do a number of tasks. And first of all, I'm going to set up a VMM server on this virtual machine. Go through the usual screens to accept the license agreement, check for updates, say I'm willing to participate in the Customer Experience Improvement Program, and register the machine. So I'm going to put my nickname in. VMM is then going to do some prereq checks, and as you can see, we've passed those. Now I get to choose where to install it. In the next screen, I need to find that installation of SQL Server. So in here, I can put in SC VMM 2008 R2. In other words, this machine. I know the instance is called MS SQL server, the default name, and I want to create a new database. And now it's asking about the Virtual Machine Manager library, and we'll see this in subsequent demonstrations. There's a catalog where template VMs are used to create new virtual machines. You need to get this right at installation time, so I'm going to change that now. I'm going to go down to the L drive, make a new folder, call it VMM library, and I'll give it the same name in here. In this screen, you can set up the various ports that the administrator console is going to talk to the server with, and this screen will also open up the ports on the firewall for you. The other thing I can do is I can elect to use a domain account to run the VMM service, and I'll do that here. So I've got, actually got a SQL service account that I normally use. This has to be a member of local administrators for this to work. Now I've done all of that, I get the inevitable summary screen, and I can hit Install. I'll cut the video while that's happening. That's installed successfully. And now, I can do the next step, which is to install the administrator console. Now I could go in and put the installation media into another virtual machine, uh, be that a client or some other server, and remotely administer VMM from there. But I'm actually going to put it on here for simplicity's sake. Just quickly run through this. Again, I get an installation path. I need to pick up that port that I put in earlier about where VMM server is broadcasting on. And that's that done. The final step in the process is to install the local agent. Now I want to do this manually because the physical server isn't joined to my domain. In other words, the actual laptop that I'm running from here is in a workroom and it's called Clockwork. So what I need to do on this physical operating system now is to go back to my VHD and go into the install for VMM 2008 R2, run setup from here, and this time run the local agent install, which I'm now going to do.
The first choice I have to make is how the agent will communicate with the server <coughs> using standard HTTP ports, which I'm going to leave alone. And the host is on a perimeter network. In other words, it's not part of the work group. So I can just put in a key into here. And I could use a CA sign certificate if I wanted to with this. I can either use the local computer name or an IP address. Now, because I'm running DNS on here and the physical machine can see the DNS server, I'm OK with a local computer name. And that's that done. What I need to do now is go and get that security file, and then I'll need to use that in the server component. There's the security file. What I'm going to do is just copy it to the root of that management resources VHD. And there it is. And then I'm going to go into disks, detach the VHD from here. I go into the settings of this virtual machine. It must be off to do this. Go into the ID controller one, add the hard disk back in. Management resources, just open that. Apply that. Start the VM. And now I'll have access to the installs for System Center again on that virtual machine plus that security file. So now what I can do is go into the VMM admin console. It's asking me what I want to manage and it is the local machine. I'll hit connect. And the first thing I need to do over here is add a host, the physical host we've just set up. I've got three options here. Um, it's not on the domain, which is why we had to do the manual procedure. It is on the perimeter network and I could also add in a VMware ESX server. I'm going for the middle option here. And I can put in the name of the machine. It's called Clockwork. I'll put in the encryption key. And now I need that security file I created earlier. And there it is. Hit Add. The next wizard now allows me to put it in a specific group. Because I've only got one host, I'm just going to leave it in the old host group. And I also need to specify where I want to put the virtual machines um, on that server. And I've already got a, a directory for that because I'm running this as a virtual machine. So it's G virtual machines. At this point, I could create a script of all of that, which shows me the PowerShell that's going to be run. And you could then go away and modify all of that if you wanted to and repeatedly add hosts in using a configuration script. When I'm ready, I can hit add hosts and away the process goes. And that's it completed. So I've now got the change request down here. I've got summary and details of what's gone on. I can just close this window. And now I've got my clockwork physical host managed by SCVMM. And we can see that it's got eight cores, 1.87 gig Pentium 4. I've got my 16 gigs of memory. And I'm running Windows Server 2008 R2 Enterprise Service Pack 1. And Hyper-V is up to date. So. That's a quick introduction to installing SCVMM. I've been Andrew Fryer. Thank you very much for listening.